<clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to St. Augustine's Parish as we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant is Father McSweeney, and this Mass is being offered for all of our parishioners and benefactors in Trudy Meal. The St. Joseph Men's Group will have its first meeting on Wednesday, December 6th at 7 p.m. in the Parish Hall. Please see today's bulletin for details. Please support our Boy Scout Troop 49 by purchasing a baked goodie at their sale after today's Mass. The proceeds support troop events like camping, leadership development, and service projects. Friday, December the 8th, is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, a Holy Day of Obligation. Masses will be as follows. Thursday evening, December 7th, at 5.30 p.m., and Friday, December the 8th, at 6.30 and 8.30 a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. Please rise and join in the processional hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 42. Brothers and sisters, today we begin the season of Advent. We open our hearts to God's love as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives and our homes. The candles of this wreath remind us that Jesus Christ came to conquer the darkness of sin and death and lead us into the light of his glorious kingdom. Let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Brethren, to prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, we must first call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ. May God bless you as you minister the body of Christ to our brothers and sisters who cannot be present here with us.
Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you, While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. One of the images I always use for this great season of Advent revolves around Francis Brown. Francis Brown was born in Ireland. He was orphaned when he was a young teenager and was taken care of by his uncle, who was a Catholic bishop in Cloyne. At his 17th birthday, his uncle gave him a camera, and he became an avid photographer. Not unusually, he felt then called to the priesthood himself and entered the Society of Jesus. When he was still a scholastic, his uncle gave him a gift of a one-day tour on a cruise liner. He gladly accepted the gift with the permission of his superiors and went from Southampton to Cherbourg in France and from Cherbourg in France to Queenstown in Ireland. While he was on this one-day, one-night tour, he met an American couple who were millionaires and they were taken by the young scholastic. And they told him that they would gladly pay for his fare to New York and back if he would stay with them. He was excited with the invitation, quickly went to the radio room 
and sent a message to his superior asking for permission. A short while later, he got the response. The response was, get off that ship immediately. That was in April of 1915, 1912, the Titanic. The only photographs of life on the Titanic were the ones that Francis Brown took while he was there and left when he had to leave. The Titanic gives a lot of meaning to the beginning of this great season of Advent. The beginning of the season of Advent is not our preparing for Christmas, yet it's a reminder that we should always be preparing for when Christ comes again. Because the Titanic believed itself unsinkable, as many people do. They think their lives are unsinkable. Some even brag that not even God could sink that ship. The Titanic was going faster than it was supposed to because they wanted to break the record of transatlantic crossing. A lot of us go faster than we should through life. We don't always pay attention. And they ignored the warnings that were given that there was ice in the area. All these things are reminders of the challenges we sometimes have. Sometimes we think we're unsinkable. Sometimes we just travel too fastly through this life. We're not listening to the warnings that are out there. And Advent tells us that's what our primary responsibility is to make sure we're always preparing for the second coming of Christ when he will come to judge us. I recently read another story about that great liner, the Titanic. Davy Blair was one of the crewmen on the Titanic who at the last moment was told he had to leave because the White Star Line wanted to bring experienced sailors from the Olympic to the Titanic for its native voyage, its first voyage. And so, Davy Blair, in writing to his family, was very disappointed that he was not allowed to serve on the Titanic. Accidentally, he took the key to the locker that held the binoculars for the crow's nest. One of the errors of the Titanic was The crow's nest didn't have binoculars so that they could see the things that were approaching or that they were approaching. At the inquest, Davy Blair admitted, accidentally he he took the key to the locker that held the binoculars. So they were there, but they weren't used. Again, Christ tells us to be like watchmen ourselves. And to be like watchmen, we have to be prepared for all the things that can come upon us in this world and to be prepared to do something before we crash into them and that we need to always remind ourselves and again while most of the world is already decorated for Christmas and already doing all of the things that we will eventually do we begin this great season reminding ourselves there are two comings of Christ that we anticipate one is going to be on December 25th but we don't know when the second one will occur. We do not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man will come again. And over and over again, he pleads with us to always be prepared for that. Live each and every day preparing ourselves for our eternal judgment, because that's what it's all about. Doesn't matter if you can gain all the riches of this world, because one day they will all disappear. We seek those things that are eternal and to claim them as our own, we have to live the life that Christ calls us to. Sometimes we have to slow down. Sometimes we have to realize we're not unsinkable. Sometimes we have to be aware of those things that can distract us in this world, those things that can sometimes wreck our voyage. But we have to always recognize that Christ is the guide who leads us through those dangerous waters eventually home to his home port and that we must always be living that reality in our lives 
And as the season of Advent every year reminds us, don't rush into Christmas yet. Make sure you're preparing yourselves for the coming of the Messiah. Make sure you're doing here and now in our everyday lives the things that reflect our belief that the Son of God came into this world to conquer death and to teach us how to make it to the other side. And that we need to take that and live that and realize that one day we will be judged and we want to be judged worthy. And Christ wants us to be judged worthy and he begs us always to be prepared. So we must find out how in our lives we do the things we need to do to make sure we are worthy of the celebrations we will eventually celebrate towards the end of Advent. And as I often reflect, little children know how to prepare for Christmas properly. They prepare by being good. That's the lesson for all Christians. We prepare for the coming of the Messiah by always trying to be good. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Dolan, and all bishops, that they may be filled with abundant graces and spiritual gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. For those who hold public office, that they may carry out their duties according to the truth of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. For our parish community, that we may spend this Advent in peaceful and productive preparation, we pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, especially from our own parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord Lord For the sick of our parish, especially Joan DeBart, Patrick Bonner, Daisy DeMarco, Peace, Aiden, Barbara O'Donnell, Gloria Rodriguez, Mary Petmel, Marie Tassini, Grace Aaronholtz, Jerry, Jerry Pesch, Gertrude Pickney, Ellen Mitchell, Manuel Odesty, Terry Beresford, Angela Separano, and Maria Reynolds, that they may receive God's comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, especially for Michaela Barton, Michael Giordano, and for all of our parishioners and our benefactors, and for Trudy Meal, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. We pray for stronger marriages and families, for those in single life, for a greater respect for all human life, for all the intentions in our parish book of petitions and all those intentions that we hold 
in the silence of our hearts. And for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Please join in the offertory hymn, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates, number 69. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise of the Lord in his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your many gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. He is right and just. Is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace Father. On you stay, we told his Dona nobis 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. But if Christ can be saved for everlasting life. But if Christ can be saved for everlasting life. Somebody Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Please join the communion hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence, number 197.
May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a little parish notification. I've been limping around a lot lately. The doctor needs to do operation on my Achilles tendon tomorrow. She said I probably won't be walking for two or three weeks, so you won't see me. I told her I have to celebrate Christmas Mass with my people, so pray that I can walk for Christmas. The Lord uh, and the Boy Scouts are having a bake sale on a lighter note, <laughs> so please support our Boy Scouts and buy something good. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And His Blessed Mother. St. Michael, the Archangel, send us to battle to our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, proud God. Please join in the recessional hymn, O Come Divine Messiah, number 44. <laughs>